This is rhubarb. Rhubarb is a very interesting vegetable crop used for making pies and jams. Uh, we use the petiole of the leaves. I think a lot of people have it around. It's not easy to buy, but uh, almost everyone seems to grow some rhubarb. This is a pretty uh, common sort of variety. This is Victoria. And we see this lovely big petiole of the leaf that we harvest. Not much breeding for rhubarb, but when anyone talks about it, they always say they would like red. Very, very red petioles to make red jams and red pies and, and so forth. This variety doesn't seem to have that, and a lot of varieties don't. There are some very red varieties. Uh, this one is called Valentine. It's pretty common in the trade. And unfortunately, like many of the red varieties that we see, uh, you can see by the size of my hand here, it, it's not a very productive plant. So, are there any varieties out there that are red and productive? Well, first we need to take a look at some varieties. This is Crimson Cherry. It's a fairly productive large plant. Um, let's see a pedial here. It's, it's pink. It's not really much more red than the uh, uh, I'm sorry, Victoria. Um, quite a bit more productive than the Valentine. And really the, the inside of the pedials is still green, juicy and delicious, but uh, not as red as some would like. This is German wine. Another very productive variety. See quite large. Fairly massive pedials on these. Uh, again, not much darker than the Victoria. It does, however, have some amount of redness in it, but not nearly as much as does the Valentine. This is Mammoth. It's uh, fairly well named. The plant is almost as tall as I am. Hard to pull these monsters. Mammoth has some red on it. Again, really not a whole lot more than the Victoria. And as you might guess, uh, not that much pink inside. Although there's a little bit. Very productive, however. Haywood Delight is this moderately productive one, kind of hemmed in by my mammoth plant, I'm afraid. It is quite a bit redder, um, somewhat redder than the Victoria, not quite as red as Valentine, uh, much more productive than the Valentine. Uh, where you see green, you normally get green. And like many of these, it's red mostly on the outside, not so much shot through. So the, the cooked product will be a lovely pink, but not perhaps as red as some would really like it to go. This is Sutton, another English variety. Broke that one, much like the Victoria. Perhaps even more productive, but uh, mostly green. When we can't find the varieties we want, we turn to breeding. And luckily for us, rhubarb is all too happy to help. It has enormous flower clusters that are serviced by bees and wasps and many other kinds of pollinators. The flowers are very small and difficult to work with by hand, so we just let the pollinators do uh, open pollination for us. Plant the varieties we like or very interested in side by side. We let the pollinators move the pollen around as they will. And then we collect the hundreds and hundreds of seeds that result uh, each season from healthy rhubarb plants that are allowed to go to seed. From these seeds will come no end of uh, new genetic variation. And the beauty of working with a crop like rhubarb is that it's cloned. So once we find a good variety, we simply clone it. And whatever hybrid vigor and other characteristics it has, they're already fixed and ready to go.
a new variety could be born right in your garden. Of course, we know rhubarb comes from seed because uh, you can get volunteer rhubarb if you let it go to seed. My yard had no rhubarb plants when we moved in, but uh, little seedlings have been popping up all over. Here's a, a, a little onion patch I have, and you can see here one, two, three rhubarb seedlings that have just magically appeared. Some of the seedlings that have appeared, like this here in amongst some shrubs, are uh, completely green. Actually, more green than any variety we've looked at so far. And some of the seedlings are quite red. See a lot of pink on this one here. And there's some pink inside. Some of the pedioles are even more remarkably pink all the way through, which is what we're looking for. Obviously rhubarb will grow wild if you let it, but it's not hard to start it from seed either. Uh, this is a seedling from some rhubarb uh, seed I got from Belarus from a seed saver in Minsk. And uh, I saved this one to plant out uh, because it's quite red, looking like I would perhaps enjoy having. Um, this was started uh, with the tomatoes in early April. And here we are now in early June. It's got some pretty good growth. I expect in uh, a couple of years I could harvest it. Certainly I can rate it for how, how nice and red and productive it looks uh, before then. So, uh, with open pollination you get whatever comes, but uh, thinning out the red ones is pretty easy to do. Uh, you can plant the seeds in mass and just thin and see what kind of wonderful luck you come up with. Uh, obviously I found some that are completely green and unacceptable and some that are very red and look quite promising. So, uh, not hard to work with, uh, even in a backyard setting. So perhaps uh, we can improve this wonderful minor vegetable crop just in our backyards.